Worcestershire rack up the runs in Bristol. Jake, Libby and Dowell Mitchell shone on the second day of play in Bristol. Playing together for the first time, the pair put on 152 for the first wicket in the pair's reply to Gloucestershire's first innings total of 267. Worcestershire headed into day three with 38 overs left in which to bat and eight wickets in hand. That would pretty quickly be reduced to seven wickets, as early on Josh Shaw struck to remove Tom Fell, LBW, for 39. The visitors would reach 250 without further loss, and Haynes turned his attention to a half century. That came as he turned one off of his pads into the leg side for four, but in the next over, he was unable to repeat the shot to the right arm over bowling of Higgins, who had him trapped LBW as he tried to play across the line. Worcestershire were untroubled. They may have lost a couple of wickets, but the scoring rate did not dip. Vessels was the perfect man to attack the Gloucestershire bowlers. His endeavour saw him score a quick-fire 19 off of 17 deliveries, as he and Oliveira helped Worcestershire pass 300. Taylor would remove Vessels. An attempted slog over the leg side was well caught on the boundary by Van Buren. Oliveira came out of his shell with Worcestershire's overs almost completed firing quick boundaries as the score raced towards 350. They'd make it through to lunch without further loss, the score now 336 for 5, and Worcestershire enjoying a lead of 69 runs. With eight overs left to that, Worcestershire showed the form that saw them reach finals day last year, as Dolivera and Cox went on a charge. Over the next 48 balls, the pair added a massive 92 runs to the total, no Gloucestershire bowler immune to their brand of barnstorming cricket. It meant that when they reached 120 overs, Worcestershire had become the first side to register over 400 in the Bob Willis Trophy, finishing the innings on 428 for five. Gloucestershire 161 runs behind the visitors. The score put the pairs in a commanding position, with their hosts yet to bat. Dolivera finishing on 91 not out, Cox five runs shy of a first half century this season. And the visitors' hopes of victory were given a boost early in the Gloucestershire reply. Hammond caught at second slip off the bowling of Morris by a diving Darrell Mitchell. The home side added just 20 to the score before Worcestershire had another. This time Van Buren out LBW to tongue. Chris Dent gave his side something to cheer, his boundaries helping the side pass 50 as the tea interval drew close. They'd reached the break at 60 for two, 101 runs behind their visitors. Dent, now joined by Hankins, offered some resistance as the evening session got underway. Both men played a watchful innings, boundaries less of a priority than ensuring they weren't skittled for a low total. The skipper's knock was rewarded with a half century, his side now closing in on three figures. That landmark came with a single off the bowling of Dolivera. For the remainder of the session, the going was slow. Dent was conscious of the value of his wicket, only occasionally finding the boundary where possible. The home side knew that with their skipper at the crease, they had every chance of all three results on day four. But disaster would strike with 14 balls remaining in the day. Movement off the seam from Chris Morris was enough to find the edge and see the Gloucestershire captain depart for a well-made 67. The late wicket left Gloucestershire 135 for three. They'll be confident they can set Worcestershire a decent total, but with the firepower on show in the pair's first innings, anything looks achievable for the visitors.